task number eight. That's the uh, the 15,000 points task. That's the fun one. All right, now what we're gonna do. So we saw that the backend, even though it has the IP address of the, or, or the database, they weren't able to communicate. When you create a, a network in Docker, by default, they cannot communicate with each other, right? So you have user-defined bridge networks and you have the default bridge network. When you have two user-defined bridge networks, they cannot communicate with each other. And that's why we're just, you know, kind of like messing up, let's say with the IP tables, you wouldn't necessarily do it exactly like this, right, in a in production environment, but this is just to uh, to show you, uh, you know, something else, right? So how you can interact with IP tables to make networks communicate. So first thing we're gonna do is to run, uh, just to list all of the rules that we have in the IP tables with this command. And I'm not gonna go, you know, into IP tables, but basically there are two. Uh, there, you know, there's a bunch of chains here. One of them is uh, Docker, and then you've got Docker Isolation Stage One and Docker Isolation Stage Two, right? And and you know, the the the, the request goes through, you know, through these chains, and so from at some point it's gonna get to Docker Isolation Stage in One, and then you see that the target is Docker Isolation Stage in Two. That's the one that we're we care about here. If we take a look at Docker isolation staging two, we have three drop rules, right? Which means that if the traffic is going out from this interface, it's going to be dropped. If the traffic is going out from this interface, it's going to be dropped, right? So that's how we're kind of like isolating the uh, Docker networks. And if you want to take a look at these networks, you do if config, and there's going to be a bunch of interfaces. But at the at the top, there are going to be two of them these two and these are the ones that we created so 172 uh 172.18 that's the back end and 172.19 that's the database so what we need to do here is we need to create a rule in our ip table that it's gonna allow traffic to go from the data the back end network to the database network okay and what we do is we create another rule and that rule is gonna be on top of the drop rule, right? So we, cr we create an accept rule that's gonna be on top of the drop rule. So that's gonna have um, higher priority. So to do that, there is um, a bit of a lengthy command. So sudo IP tables. First thing, when you specify uh, the interface, right? So the interface is gonna, oh, sorry, on the interface, the, the chain. So dash uppercase I, that's gonna be the chain. And the chain, if I go back here, is Docker isolation stage two. So that's the chain that I want to add rules into. Dash I chain. And then dash I, so that's the, uh, I'll come back here. You've got int, or sorry, in and out. So dash E, dash I is for in. So what, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do from backend to database and then from database to backend. So I, I have to have two rules, right? So the traffic goes back and forth. So I'm going to grab the first one. So this is the backend and then out is going to be database. And finally, we need to say if the target is drop, accept, etc. So dash j lowercase and then all uppercase accept if i bring ip tables again um yeah so we have accept here at the top so from this interface to this the traffic will be accepted now well, let's do the all the way around it's going to become in this is going to become out And there we go. So from one to the other, from the other to the first one. So that these are the two rules that we we had to add to our IP table. And what else here do I need? I think that's it. Yeah. So now that the rules are there, we we can go to the back end and make sure that it can connect to the database. So to do that, what we need to do is we grab the ID of the back end container and run exec. Oops, let me go back run exec and then from there we're going to install uh two okay let's go back so we're going to install telnet so 
Docker PS. Let's grab the backend first. So this is the backend. Docker exact IT. This is to go into the container and bring up the shell. All right, so this is the backend container. Now let's add. Yeah, and notice that this is, you know, this is the, con the container is running here, right? So I'm not launching a new one. I'm just going inside the one that is running. So let me install telnet via that package. And then I can do telnet IP address of the database 27017. Telnet 172.19.0.0.2, I believe. 27017. Yep, there you go. So it says connected. That means now that we have our IP tables um, rules in place, the, the, the backend can connect to the database. And then, okay, now capturing the flag. To capture the flag, what we're going to do is we're going to run TCP dump in the, uh, the database network interface. So we want to listen to all of the traffic coming to, uh, to the database one. But before we do that, there's one thing I wanted to mention. So let me copy, oh wait, actually, let me grab the, let me exit the container. I have config. This is the, so 19. Let me copy and paste this here. And then first, dash I. And all these options. I run this. You see that nothing's happening. And I don't know if anyone, you know, uh, had this problem uh, during the event, but this is what I guess was part of the challenge as well to kind of like figure it out why this is happening. But basically what's happening here is that, you know, the backend is not sending anything because it tried once, it didn't connect. And, you know, later on we included the rules and now there is a route from the backend to the, to the database network. But the backend is just like, you know, it's saying, whatever, <laughs> I'm not going to try, right? So what we're going to do is just rerun the backend container. So it starts communicating with the database again. So let me kill this. Stop. Move. And let's see if I still have in history. That was the last one that I ran. Again. Yeah. Now it says connected to MongoDB. So we know that, you know, at least a little bit of traffic was sent to that um, database network interface. Now let's run it again, TCP dump. Now we see something completely different. So this is, you know, the data coming from, um, from the backend. What we're interested in for the, for the flag so let's take a look at the flag. We need to take a look at this line specifically from, from that traffic. So we've got version and which is this one here, right? So let's take a look at this line. So what, what do we need? So the flag is the first two octets, uh, no space of the X decimal representation reading from right to left. I know that there was a, a little bit of um, confusing uh, confusion about this right to left. And, you know, I even mentioned to the person that's something we're going to uh, keep in mind for the next one to try to explain a little bit better. But what we meant from right to left is like reading from right to left and we're going to read the chunks, right? So it's, for example, if we're reading from right to left, it's not that it's going to be one, six, five, six, it's still going to be six, five, six, one, but we're just going to reading that we're, we're reading the chunks from, uh, from right to left. Okay. So we need two octets. Now that's the, that's the catch. So one octet is eight bits. Two of them is 16 bits in total. This thing here is an hexadecimal uh, representation of the data. And one hexadecimal character has four bits. So if you take 16 divided by four, that's going to give you four characters, which means that 16 bits, that translates to four hexadecimal characters. And if you're reading from right to left and you want the first uh, occurrence, right? Or the or first two octets, that will be the first four characters, six, six, five, six, one. So that was the, um, the answer for, for this one. So that was the flag back here. So dev slope, yes, there it is.